We are looking at uh, probabilistic methods. Uh, incidentally, there is a uh, homework assignment, which is due uh, sometime soon. <laughs> Uh, let's see, when is it due? Uh, is it, uh, oh, no, is it due on... Uh, tomorrow, I guess. Tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow night, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So it, it will probably take some work. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's not too uh, bad, but uh, it will uh, definitely take a significant amount of uh, work. So uh, if you haven't gotten uh, started, then allow uh, plenty of time. So we were looking at uh, probabilistic uh, methods. We saw the definition of probability. We saw conditional probability. We saw uh, density function, distribution function, the expected value. Uh, and we saw some of the distributions. We saw the binomial distribution, the Poisson distribution, so those two are discrete distributions. And then we saw a couple of continuous distributions. So we saw the Gaussian distribution. Oh, that reminds me of something. Thank you. Oh, I found my uh, handmark bit. OK, so he, uh, see here? this uh, bell shape to cover here. So I think they don't use this uh, anymore because they must have switched to the Euro. But they're so proud of uh, Gauss, who was a German, for inventing this uh, distribution. They put it on their uh, Kenmark bill. So I thought I'll keep a copy of it to uh, show to my uh, students. Uh, now it's probably a collector's item. So I can probably sell it to uh, professors who teach uh, probability theory, and they may be willing to pay good money for it. Uh, so and we saw uh, exponential distribution, which is uh, very important. And uh, we have seen that uh, when the rate leaving a certain state, is uh, governed by a parameter, and we call that lambda. Then it results in a um, in the exponential uh, density function. And I was also mentioning that there is a generalization of the exponential density function, which is Weber distribution. Later on, perhaps I will mention again about Weber distribution. Uh, and also I mentioned about uh, variance and covariance, which are important if you want to take into account statistical correlation. Uh, st statistical correlation, a lot of people don't think about. And we are going to actually assume most of the time that the failures are status not statistically correlated. That would be a simplifying assumption. And however, if you want to do uh, more accurate calculations, you should take that into account. And we looked at Markov processes and Markov chains, continuous and the discrete version. And Poisson process is a Markov process. Most important part about the Markov process is that it uh, uh, is memoryless. It does not remember what has happened in the past. And we saw analysis of a Poisson process, which is a counting process. And we saw how we come to a, a Poisson distribution. And also, again, we saw that uh, uh, if you take uppercase t to be the time when the system leaves a certain state, then that uppercase t is distributed using the exponential distribution. And now we are ready to uh, do the reliability evaluation. Re uh, let's look at reliability analysis. Oh, 
Okay, before we uh, talk about reliability, uh, let me uh, see if you have thought about some questions. Let us say you have some uh, lot of photographs that you have taken last few years, and you want to preserve them for a long time. What is the most reliable medium where you should uh, store them? Would you store them in your hard disk of your PC? Or would you uh, store them, uh, let us say you have a PC with a uh, uh, solid state drive, or you have a, uh, one of those uh, uh, thumb drives that have capacity, would you save your photograph there? Or would you save your photographs uh, on a website within the cloud? That means would you uh, rent a uh, website and save your stuff there. So which one do you think is uh, most uh, reliable? Online. So online? So uh, some uh, website uh, somewhere? Well, not just somewhere, yeah. Something reliable. Oh, what do you mean reliable? <laughs> uh, so uh, there, there are some uh, websites and there are some services provided by some reputed uh, uh, vendors, and then there are some free file hosting sites also. I'm not quite sure about the free file hosting sites, but that is actually a, a, a big debate about how uh, reliable and secure uh, things in the cloud are. Uh, any other uh, thoughts on this? Anyone has a solid state drive? Okay, so how, how do you compare its reliability with this magnetic storage? You know, Based if I want to do, like, if I want to save these pictures, like, in a different way, okay. I would do different copies. I would do one on my PC, I would do one on the thumb drive, and I would do an online <laughs> copy. So, if one gets damaged, at least I have a backup. So, I usually will do, like, redundant copies. Ah, oh, okay. So, how about you? Uh, I'll do two type of redundancy. I'll either put it on a solid state drive and then online storage. Same thing. So, okay. Yeah, I, I guess that, that, that is a good uh, approach, but still that doesn't answer my question. My question is, which do you think is more reliable? And I, I'll let you uh, do some investigation, so do some research, and maybe uh, after a couple of lectures, let's come back to this question, and let us see what you have found. So, uh, but yeah, redundancy, of course, is the right choice if those are valuable, and especially if your hard disk crashes, or if your computer stops working, and if you have to get somebody to um, extract your files from there, you're looking at perhaps a hundred or two hundred dollars. So that's uh, quite a bit of uh, money just to extract your files from your uh, system. Okay, so we are going to look at reliability measurements. How do you measure reliability? So we will, look at, we will look at the different measures of reliability and we will see that in different situations, different measures may be more appropriate. And then we will look at some basic cases and then we will look at uh, cases when they are, you have redundancy. So basic cases when there is no redundancy. How do we evaluate reliability in those cases? And then, you want to see if you have reliability, how do you, if you have redundancy, how do you evaluate reliability? So we want to uh, look at these. Uh, so, now in uh, reliability analysis, I had mentioned that you have a permanent false. So something happens, and you have to throw that thing away because the fault is permanent. Uh, basically, you have a unit and the unit is eventually going to fail. And um, basically, this translates into decay of reliability. That eventually the reliability will decay and uh, eventually it is going to uh, uh, go bad with permanent faults. And then you can have temporary faults.
Now with temporary faults, you can sort of have a steady state of availability. You can have something that is down time to time, maybe 5% of the time, 1% of the time, or whatever. But it's sort of a steady state. Uh, so basically faults come and go. And so how do we characterize them? Now notice if you have uh, permanent faults with uh, repairs, they would be included here. So you have a process by which uh, the faults arise. And let us say you have a repair process. Maybe somebody is somehow uh, repairing them. So fault comes and then goes because the repair is done. And that effectively makes it uh, temporary. And then there is a third type, which we are not going to look at right now. But since we are classifying them, I might uh, mention them at the, uh, here. Design faults. Now notice that uh, I have here mentioned about reliability decay. And let us consider design faults during testing. Now design fault could be uh, you design some software and you're testing it and debugging it, then what happens? Or you have done some design uh, and then you are uh, exercising your design and testing it. Now as you debug and remove faults, the reliability grows because you have fewer and fewer faults left in it. So in this case, what you have is the reliability growth. And of course, the reliability growth will occur only if you are doing some successful debugging. Uh, so right now, we are going to look at only this. And later on, we will come back to this when we will talk about software reliability. And let's look at. Uh, uh, reliability measures, the most uh, common ones. Now the most, uh, I guess we should probably start with uh, the measure called uh, simply reliability. And according to the reliability literature, it is defined in this way. RT is the usual notation. And that is the probability of a correct operation in duration 0 and t. And notice that we can refer to this as a durational reliability. And if unless we say otherwise, whenever we will say the term reliability, this is what we uh, should mean. Because according to the reliability literature, this is the official definition of reliability. And then there is, as contrasted with this, there is a term called availability. And let's contrast availability. Let's indicate that by A T. Availability is given by as probability of correct operation at instant. And so notice that here we can refer to this as instantaneous measure. Now notice that uh, this would make sense when you are looking at temporary faults. For example, you have a, uh, a server, and the server is uh, uh, up. 99.9% .9 of the time and at other times it is